oh, there is nothing worse than the morning after the night before. The emotional hangover of it all, guys. I can't take it. But hello, welcome back to my channel, The Sofa Spud Reviews, where we're going to talk about our final dinner party of Married at First Sight Australia 2024. And my goodness, is there a lot to cover off in this episode. So before we actually get into tonight's dinner party, I just want to quickly note that I won't be coming on tomorrow and doing any Married at First Sight. I'm going to just do all of the final vows in one video on Thursday evening. But I will be on tomorrow to talk about Love Triangle because right after I record this, I'm going down to catch it on plus one because I'm very excited to see what this is all about. So back to the episode, the couples are all getting ready for their final dinner party and they are unanimously appalled at Jono. They're very disappointed in what he has done. A lot of them are very surprised by what he has done. I would be very surprised. I didn't think Jono had it in him and stupid idiot here was defending him so many times when Lauren was saying that he's a bit spineless. So it just goes to show you can't trust anyone. Shame on me. <laughs> and Tori, speaking of gutter rat bitches, she is still on cloud nine. Even though she saw how devastated Lauren was last night, it hasn't taken an ounce of her joy away from her. Both her and Jack are just smug as all hell because by their own admission, it's going to take the focus off them being the disaster for one night. And then we go over to Lauren and Jono's apartment and Lauren has obviously found out a bit more since we last caught up with them on the couch last night. And it turns out that Ellie wasn't the instigator of this texting. Ellie didn't text him first. It was the other way around. And later on, we do see Lauren kind of say, God, you know, I shouldn't have really been bagging on her. You know, she no, I'm going to continue to to rag on Ellie or bag on whatever the phrase was. You know, I'm still going to look at Ellie with a side eye because she knows that she shouldn't have been texting someone's partner that much and that often while they were still in an experiment. But Lauren does what I knew Lauren would do. She gets him to show his phone. Yes, if only Sarah would now show her phone to Tim. But listen, baby steps. And he does. And she's going through the messages. She's scrolling. And there is a lot of messages. We do get a glimpse. Like we can kind of get an idea of the volume. And it seems to be daily. And Jono is just squirming. He's getting that nervous dehydration thing. You know, when your top lip starts to stick to your teeth. <laughs> You're just like, have a glass of water there, Jono. You look real thirsty. And then his memory, of course, starts to fail him. And he's just, you know, he's such a little worm. And Lauren is highlighting as she's going through the text. She's highlighting the fact that nowhere in here has he even mentioned her. You know, apparently they've been texting about the experiment, but he's failed to mention one crucial part, which would be his partner, his wife, Lauren. So yeah, definitely not looking good for Jono. And you can just tell that Lauren is done. She is done, done. And Jono is then off to the side doing, you know, the little confessional one-to-one -one camera time. And he's telling the cameraman, you know, well, Lauren's seen the messages and she hasn't really seen anything that she had a problem with. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? And then he goes a step further and he says, you know, well, he's innocent and he knows that he's innocent. And then the kicker, he starts to say that Lauren is now trying to weaponize a few text messages and he didn't think that he needed to let her know anytime he sent somebody a text message and he's getting like this attitude about him that I just want to smack out of him and he's nearly suggesting that Lauren just likes having animosity. That motherfucker, that wormy little bastard is asking to be beaten with a hair straightener. Like, honest to God, if I was Lauren, I would be on the phone to his bank right now as he's given that interview to the camera, reporting every single one of the cards in his wallet as stolen. From credit card to library card to like train, ticket, subway, pass, leap card thing. Yeah, all of it, all stolen, all cancelled. Good luck. We get a quick glance at some of the happier apartments. So we've Jaden Ridge. They're looking really happy and really, really stunning. And we get Sarah and Tim who are just, you know, doing their usual act that everything is just fantastic and there was no cheating here. We're a perfect couple and Sarah's doing the ha 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 ha. 
oh my god Tim you're so funny I can't do her accent it's so ridiculous but she's nearly at the finish line you know she's repaired the image just as she wanted to and she's counting the minutes before the cameras go down and she can go back home and be face down in the back seat of her ex's car before his missus gets home and everyone lives happily ever after and then we get to the dinner party itself so Eden and Jaden, Tori and Jack arrive first and they're joined by Lauren flying solo and Lauren comes in, she pours a drink, she greets everybody and she sits herself down between the gals and do you notice how Lauren is not even, I don't even think it's registered with Lauren yet that Tori did this maliciously. I don't think she's given a thought to the fact that Tori has brought this up and the manner she's done it in. She's not giving a cold shoulder, she's not trying to downplay anything, she is telling everybody right now every single detail that she's found out 100% honest transparent and this is why I love Lauren there is no bullshit about Lauren she's in this experiment and she's not here to fake anything or to lie so as other people start to filter in they get filled in as well and of course then Jono comes in last and it is so awkward they're basically just not saying hello to each other at all And every time he kind of hugs and kisses and greets somebody else before her, I can feel the rage building within her. And the silence is deafening. And even poor Tim, he's caught in the crosshairs, you know, like Sarah's over sitting by Lauren and he's just next to Jono. And at one point, Tim just goes, how about this asparagus? I I don't normally eat asparagus, but it's the nicest asparagus. And I'm like, oh my God, poor Tim. Oh, I forgot he doesn't deal well with confrontation. So they're finally called in to be seated around the dinner table. So Lauren and Jono take their seats beside each other and they're still not really looking at each other, saying hello. And you can tell that Lauren is trying to catch his eye. She really wants him to break the ice first, but ugh, he's not going to. It's just tense and it's awkward. And we get another kind of camera one-to-one with Jono like a little confessional with him in his you know suit ready for dinner and he's basically saying that you know he told Lauren that he messaged Ellie and now she's turned it into something bad I'm like no no limp dick Tori told Lauren that you were messaging Ellie you just corrected your initial omission that you know Ellie didn't text you first it was the other way around and it is something bad so have a fucking seat there. And Sarah, of all people, raises her glass and says, let's make a toast to Jono texting Ellie. And even Sarah, in her own little confessional, owns the fact that she doesn't really have a leg to stand on. So I'll give her credit for that. But it kind of just starts the ball rolling. And Jono starts out by, you know, just reiterating that it's totally innocent, that he's not really done anything wrong. And he doesn't understand why this is being made into such a big deal. And Jaden asks Jono, like, how do you feel? Honestly, mate, like, how do you feel about Ellie? And Jono's answer is, she's a good looking girl and there's nothing going on. I think that that is a very clear <laughs> like question dodge. How do you feel? She's a good girl. There's nothing going on. Neither of those statements answer the question. But you know, in not answering the question, one could argue that you are kind of answering the question. And then Tori comes back in and she wants to deliver another little nugget of information. And I'm wondering, did she know this last night? Was she just holding this back for, you know, ammunition in case of emergency type thing? You know, if she needed to redirect the conversation for some reason. And she tells the group, you know, apparently in the gym, Jono told Jack that he would have loved to have been matched with Ellie. Oh, did he now? The sly little weasel. And he doesn't deny this. In fact, he kind of confirms it. He says, oh, was that when I was mad at Lauren or when I was fighting with Lauren? Does it matter? <laughs> like, And do you know something? The first thing that actually came into my mind was, aha, now it all makes sense why Jono 
you know, wouldn't turn on Jack when Jack's gym comments came up earlier in the season. Do you remember when he hung Lauren out to dry and he had told her, oh, Jack said X, Y and Z. And then Lauren brought this to Tori because she didn't want her friend to be humiliated. And then when Jono had to kind of step up and say, yeah, listen, Jack did say those things. He choked. And I'm starting to think that this is the reason that he choked because he knew that he had said some shit to Jack as well. And he didn't want to risk Jack bringing that up. And at this point, level two rage becomes apparent on Lauren's face. And right on cue, the honesty box comes out. So Tim and Sarah go first. And Sarah's asked, you know, do you have any regrets? And she finally gives somewhat of a correct answer, albeit it took her many, many attempts to get this right. So she says, yeah, hurting you, lying to you and the things with my ex. Bingo. 100% Sarah. Good job. You got one right. And all the couples are basically asked, you know, are you falling in love? Could you fall in love with me? And they're all like, you know, if we keep going this way and everything's great like it is now, yeah, I could totally maybe see myself someday falling in love with you. I'm not wasting my time on those questions. I'd like, give me a break. And then Sarah has to ask Tim, do you believe that I'm over my ex? And do you know something? He pauses for a very long time and then he kind of gets out. Of, oh, no, I think you're over your ex. Sometimes when a yes is that slow, it's because it's actually a no and the person just doesn't want to say no. <laughs> but that's my my theory on it. Next, we get to Jack and Tori. And yeah, do you know what? Like the questions were okay. I didn't think that they were really hard hitting questions, what they could have probably been, considering that they were specifically tailored for each couple. So, you know, Jack is asked, could I have been a better partner? Are you worried that I won't put in the effort with the long distance? And do you think I'll be faithful? And Tori, you know, answering the whole long distance and faithful question, she starts answering and she starts describing how, well, do you know what? I've been feeling really anxious and I have kind of had concerns <laughs> and he just cuts her off before she can get to an answer. He just kind of ends it, the answer for her and says, right, yeah, great. Next question. And <laughs> Everyone else at the table is like, well, what else would we expect? But we also learn here that Tori's never been in love before. And what do we think? Did we expect that? Are we surprised? Does it explain anything? <laughs> like, I kind of, at this point, I just feel more so, meh, your partner is a wanker. So does it really matter how much you love him? You're not going to leave him. That's the bottom line. And then Jack has asked some questions and he's asked, you know, how do I feel about our relationship? And he says, proud. Okay. And... <laughs> He's then asked, right now, you know, how sexually attracted are you to me? And the strangest, weirdest answer ever, he says, well, at first I didn't feel anything in my nether regions for you. And then, you know, about a month ago, I slightly felt something for you. And then a week ago, <laughs> like, at homestays, we had, you know, our intimacy or whatever the fuck he said. And, you know, we were a 9.5 in the bedroom and I had to rewind it because I thought he said we were a five in the bedroom. And I think I would have been less surprised if he had said that because he's that much of an arsehole. And not that I believe that they're a 9.5 in the bedroom, but I would just if I was in, you know, that room, I would love to know what it was that, you know, Jack docked the 0.5 for. Was it something to do with somebody pissing on somebody else? Because I feel like urine might have played a part here and I'm I'm like that if there's like a 9.5 or a 99.9 .9, I need to know what that tiny little bit is that you docked that made it not perfect so yeah what was the 0.5 Jack <laughs> asking for a friend and then she asks him are you falling in love with me and he makes this really weird sound when he's like taking a sup from his pint he's like hmm I'm like that's not a good sound and he says, no, I'm not in love with you. Just blunt, just like that. And then he's like, but, you know, maybe in time, if we keep going as we are going, I could possibly maybe potentially start to fall in love with you. And it's just so unromantic. And Tori just looks like a fucking fool. And then that is the end of the questions. 
and the camera is panning away from them and she's trying to like force a kiss out of him she nearly has him in a headlock and she's still obviously miked they're at a feckin' dinner table so even though the camera is panning away you can still hear her saying kiss me just fake it and I'm like oh god I'm so embarrassed for you like even with all of this stuff with Lauren and Jono you are still the worst couple at this table <laughs> like how does that make you feel Oh, anyway, Jade and Ridge. So Jade is saying really nice things to Ridge at one point when they're doing their question box task or their honesty box task. And she's really like layering it on thick. She's telling them that he's so great and so wonderful. And, you know, she never thought that she'd meet anyone. And it's, you know, when someone is like lathering you up with praise and compliments, you do get a bit embarrassed and you do kind of try and make an awkward joke or I don't know. I do that anyway. You you feel a bit stupid just sitting there and letting someone compliment you endlessly. So Ridge kind of, you know, turns around to the table and he's makes some, you know, way, you know, like celebration sound or something stupid. You know, he was just playing and Jade like smacks him in the chest and she shouts at him and she's like, stop it. And the whole table just goes silent. It is so uncomfortable. I just, you could cut that tension with a knife. But God love him. He just, he's mad about that girl. He doesn't even give a shit. He looks temporarily scolded and sufficiently embarrassed and brought down a notch. But then he's kind of telling her, you know, since the moment I've met you, I've never looked at anyone or felt for anyone the way I have for you. And look, if six months is too long for me to move down to be with you, then let's compromise. Let's make it three and let's just, let's just do it. I'll fill up my car with petrol and I'll drive there right now. And it's so cute. It's so sweet. And I really, really like these two. I hope they do even just make a bit of a go of it outside because it would be a shame not to, to give that a try when they have that kind of chemistry. Next, we get to Lauren and Jono. And as you can imagine, like we've seen this pretty much in the preview, their honesty box task doesn't go so well. Jono is still, you know, balls deep in this whole... I did not have sexual relations with that woman defense and it is like watching a fist fight between Mike Tyson and a visually impaired Cocker Spaniel because Jono is trying to dodge Lauren's questions and you're not going to be able to dodge Lauren's questions. She is right there. She is not stupid. She is not going to buy any of the bullshit that you're selling. So good luck with that. And you know, like Jono's whole personality in this moment shifted for me. He came across like very cavalier and really like haughty. I know that's like a very old word, haughty. I haven't used that in I don't know how long. But he does have that kind of, ugh, whatever. I don't care about you. I don't care about your opinions. Like I'm over this. And I'm like, I'm on Lauren's side here with the what's changed. You were on that couch yesterday saying all these wonderful things about me. We were in Perth having a great time. You felt so inspired by me. I was a wonderful person. I was funny. We were having sex. And the only thing that is different is that I found out that you've been texting Ellie behind my back. So now how is it that I'm this big problem? And I'm fully in agreement. How the hell has it come to pass that Jono is sitting there with like this stank ass attitude towards Lauren who's done nothing wrong? And he was asked, I think it's Tori asks him, would you have had a better time if you were matched with Ellie? And he says, oh, I'd have a better time here if I had been matched with anyone else other than Lauren. And I'm like, really? Really? <laughs> like, what a horrible little man. And do you know what, Ellie? Best of luck. Now, to finish off, we actually get something nice. I didn't anticipate this episode ending with something nice so let's actually celebrate this moment together because Jaden is asked when they get their honesty box Eden says how do you feel about me and Jaden kind of pauses and he looks really nervous and he says I love you and I screamed I screamed I screamed I screamed and then she like hugs him and she says into his ear, you know, I love you too. And you know what? These guys have been annoying the absolute living shit out of me for like two weeks now. I wanted to just be done with them. I was sick of listening to them argue, but I lost my mind. I think this was so cute and I'm really happy because they were my favourite couple in the beginning. And I do genuinely think that they would make a lovely couple outside here if they could just figure out how the fuck to communicate with each other. But yeah, to finish off that 
particular night with a really genuine I love you and immediate I love you too my heart is very happy so with that guys we will leave it there I will be back on Thursday for more Married at First Sight Australia I'm going to do all of the final vows in one go on Thursday evening and I'm going to be back probably tomorrow to talk about my first reactions to Love Triangle so have a lovely evening guys I will chat to you soon and as always sweet dreams